Good morning. Happy Thursday to you guys. I'm so sorry for being late. I was coming down the stairs and little Michael woke up. I was like, no. But thank God dad was still here. So he took care of him. He usually dresses him in the morning for school. So how are you guys doing today? Let's tag a few people. Um, we were supposed to get snow the other night. We didn't get it. We got like, like a dust. So, um, that wasn't bad. And, um, good morning. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? Trying to tug a few people or share it. Good morning. How are you? I have my cup here. My tea that hubby just brought me. The cup is a little raggedy, but I wanted you guys to see um, the scripture. Raggedy. How are you, Rhonda? BC News is live in Newark. What's going on in Newark? Lord Jesus, I hope it's not another shooting. Gosh. How are you? Oh, uh, uh, multiple car fire at Newark airport wow i just pulled out a lemon on king oh my god i'm starting more of eating day tippers oh uh. hi coco Rhonda. that sounds so delicious yeah it sounds delicious good morning coco hi coco Rhonda, that sounds so delicious. Invite Denise. Uh, it's so okay, she's delicious. already there, there. Good morning, Coco. Hi, Coco. Oh, turn that Rhonda, down. That sounds so delicious. Turn that down. Just trying to invite a few people. What are you guys up to today? Rhonda's already there, but oh, um, okay. Okay, it's it. What are you guys up to today? I have to see what I'm talking about. Someone wanted me to talk about something specific. It's negative degrees here. Ooh, how many negative? Oh my God. Did they say it was going to be below zero here? I don't remember. Um, I think maybe overnight it was... Um, degrees are you guys going out today Coco because I heard that there were some classes that um two degrees here oh Rhonda where are you again I didn't think you were somewhere freezing cold wow that's cold uh, hi Pamela how are you my dear The wind chill is crazy and only two hour delay from school. Wow. Lexi does have a delay opening today. Huh. Yeah, two hours. You're right. Two hours. West Virginia. Okay. Yeah, Rhonda, you're all the way up here with us. So you're it's cold. Um wow. That is cold. <laughs> <laughs>
get great freezing and re ready for work. Pamela, where are you again? I'm trying to find the topic that, uh, what's her name wanted me to talk about? Real quick, it's going to be like 10 or 15 minutes because I have to go. Okay, here we go. Places to go to to find uh, your future uh, hubby, and she's not even on. She's sleep. <laughs> Danielle is sleep, but she she wanted me to talk about that, so I'll talk about that for about ten minutes later. I'm serving at a repast for a few hours. Oh wow, wow! Someone passed. So sorry. Four windshield, native twenty, Ohio. Oh my God. Ooh, Pamela, are you guys going out today? Are the schools closed? I think I heard the schools were closed. Hi, Denise. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to show you guys my cup. It's a little raggedy, but and my nails are raggedy, child. I'm going for Saturday morning. Um, it says walk by faith, and the scripture is Second Corinthians five and seventeen. This was a gift Michael bought me a few years ago. I think it was an anniversary gift or a wedding gift or our birthday or something. You look so pretty. Ah, oh, thank you, Denise. Thank you. I have to learn to do my makeup better. I just do something real quick. All right, guys. I want to talk about really, really quick. Where's the coffee? Here's the coffee, Denise. You know I have my coffee. Schools are closed, but I have to go to work. Oh, Pamela. Oh, oh yeah. You have to go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you know I have my coffee. It's a little cold. All right. Really quick for about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about, and I said I want to do more lives. Um... So I'm going to try to do them in the morning if I could get up, get downstairs before the baby wake up. So, But it's early. A lot of people are not on. So um, talk about places to go to be found by your future hubby. Okay. So for those of us who are in the church, and of course, I'm a church girl, so I know what, what I did. In the church, waiting for God to send my husband. He never sent him. And, um, you know, I was writing in the book and in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, I was waiting for God to send my husband to my church, but I didn't date guys that I went to church with, school with, or work with. So that was kind of crazy. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. You know, and I guess I was of the mindset that he's just going to walk in the church He's going to see me and I'm going to be the one, you know, and of course that's not the way it is because now my understanding is, and what I share is you don't just meet one guy and decide he's it. But that's how I was thinking when I was younger, you know, 19, 20, I was, I was so young, um, that, you know, we're just going to meet and he's going to be the one. And of course that's not how it is, that's not how it's supposed to be, because I think a lot of women, uh, we get caught up in situations because we meet this guy and we wait around two or three years for him to marry us. And we know he's not the one, but you know, we've been together for two years, so we might as well get married. And we need to stop that. We need to stop meeting a guy and saying that he's the one because we don't know that he's the one. And of course we need to date, AKA gather data on uh, multiple guys at once. So for those of us in the church, Denise, I just, Denise goes to the uh, synagogue. We need to get out of our churches because I know a lot of church people think that, you know, you can only meet your husband at church. And most churches are tiny churches. Um, I think I was reading a research a few years ago and it says um, a church with 250 people is considered a mega church. What? Those churches down south are huge. You're talking 20,000, 25, 15,000, 30,000. I think Crawford Dollar Church is 30,000 people. Um, Joel Olstein Church is, is close, 25, 30,000. Bishop Jake's Church. I don't even know what Bishop Jake's numbers are. 15,000 people, I don't remember. And um, my husband's church, he has three services. And um, it's a, it's a nice-sized church. My husband's church is the biggest church in our city. So any big church events, special events, any big person pass, that's the church they use because it could hold 
Um, Mike. Mike. Oh, that's Lexi. I was going to ask him how many people he think his church can hold. I don't know. About a thousand people. Because it's da upstairs and downstairs. And there's an overflow room. So... So, but most of us are in little churches. Like my father's church was a small church. You know, on a Sunday, we were blessed if we had 100 people. Um, most churches are like 50 people, 75 people. So when you think about that, the same people you're going to church with, the same people you grew up with, there is not many options for us to marry. Um, so what we have to do, ladies, is we have to get out of our churches or our comfort zones. And um, we have to go to different events to try to meet someone. Um, religious people are everywhere. Church people, church men are not only in church. So, you know, I have shared that I met my husband at a networking event. Um, it's it's a restaurant here in the daytime and on Friday nights it turned into um a lounge and they have like events so on that Friday night they had um um a networking event so I went and I have went it's called first Friday every first Friday of each month they have an event called first Friday in different cities around here and uh, I had went the year before in the summer, but I left. I felt uncomfortable because I didn't have anything to market because it's a network event. You know, you need to network, have business cards. And so, so I, I kind of left. So the a year later, I came back. I had my book and um, he was there and he was flirting with me all night and I didn't even know it. <laughs> um, but. Uh, he leaned over. He said, you must have your mother's legs. Or he asked, do you have your mother's leg or legs? Or you must have your mother's legs or something like that. Because I was wearing a, a short black dress that sits on my knee. Um, I never shared this before. Tall boots that came all the way up to my knee and fishnet stockings. So there was, it was just one little peak. <laughs> um, but he said he was flirting with me all night. And um, took him a month to call me, but when he did, he was on it. He was on it. He didn't miss. He didn't miss a step. So I just want to encourage you guys that you have to get out of your comfort zone, right, Denise? <laughs> and when he said that, um, I was sitting on the opposite side of him. You know those little tables that only two people could sit. So he was sitting. No, let me let me tell you guys how good God is, right? My there's a sheriff officer that worked at my job. I think I think he came because his wife was there. I remember the wife, I don't remember him, but I remember asking him to buy my book. He was cheap. And he was like, Well, I don't have any kids, so I don't really need to buy the book. His wife bought the book. So either there or another event. But his wife was there and he went to school with my husband. So when Michael came in, my coworker and I were sitting across from each each other. The, his wife was sitting on the other little table. So when Michael came in, he rec they recognized each other. He sat at her table and they were talking. And so he was sitting next to me at the other table. So he leaned over and um, he says, you, you must have your mother's leg. Good morning, Shonda. How are you? So, um, and what if I didn't go out? And I told you guys, I turned 34 and I was like, oh my God, I'm 34. No husband, no prospect. Lost sound. Anyone else? Um, turn that up a little bit. I hope that helps, Pamela. I'm sorry. Um, so, just try to find... Okay, good. Just try to find events in your city. You have to come out of your comfort zone because there's no one in your churches. There's no one in your synagogue. Um, um, I think it's just Christian girls and Jewish girls here. I don't think there's any other um, uh, religious persuasion here that I know of. But I know Christian girls and um, Jewish girls, Denise. Um, 
Um, so we have to get out of our comfort zone. It would be nice to meet someone at church, but on for our temple or your synagogue. But of course, there's nobody there. You know, they're either married. I think um, someone said that red looks amazing on you, Janice. Thank you. We are red Thursday. We have, we are supposed to wear red on Thursday, and red is my favorite color too. Um, get out of our comfort zone. There's no one in our churches, no one in our synagogues. And, and my husband was in a huge church, and he he didn't meet anyone you know he's he had kind of given up because he was like 46 he had kind of given up that he didn't meet anyone so mike mike about how many people do you think hold in uh metropolitan 1200 uh-huh 1200 see i was off by 200 he says 1200 so on a given sunday and our it's packed there's seven o'clock service there's nine o'clock service and 11.30 service. 7 o'clock service is packed. 9 o'clock service is packed. 11.30 is the youth service. It's, it's not as packed. And when we have events, it's packed. And we also have an overflow room. So that, that's a lot of people. Um, so, but I guess they weren't fellowshipping because Michael is all business. He go to church, goes go to the men fellowship, and then he leaves. So I'm just saying he was at that church and he didn't meet anyone there at the church that wanted to marry him but I knew there were a few ladies that were interested because when I, I was doing new membership class and um the teacher that taught him new membership class was teaching me new membership class and um there was another and she introduced oh this is Michael's wife because I visited the church but I didn't do join until we got married and the look she gave me was like you you knew here and you you got somebody here already. That's the look, but whatever. <laughs> I, I have never forgotten that. Every time I see her, I just remember. Um, Shonda says she's the youngest one in her church. See, youngest in my church, and I'm 48. See, so who are you gonna marry at the church? So find events in your area. I think Danielle says she's um <laughs> on. Eventbrite, I think it is. She looked up events on Eventbrite and um, go to events that uh, match what you like. So biz I love businessmen. So going to a business event was perfect for me because there are other businessmen there. So whatever event you like, you have to try to find those events that um, matches what you like. But also, you know, try to go to different areas. Go into the upper... Um, middle class areas, go have lunch, you know, go have dinner at one of those restaurants up there. See if there's any events there. Um, instead of getting a gym membership, if you go to the gym, instead of getting a gym membership in your community, you know, it's probably broke down. There's no one in your community. Try to get a gym membership in, um, an upper class community and you might be able to meet someone. Um, try to come out of your comfort zone because we like to stay in our circle right we like to stay where we're comfortable but sometimes you just might have to i live in jersey i have planned to go to new york there's a nice restaurant i heard in new york that have a lot of businessmen there i was gonna go but um i met michael and i asked him about it and he was supposed to take me i'm gonna ask him about it again he never took me there but um try to see if there's any events and nice restaurants in your community um see if there's hotels in your community see if they have conferences is it a conference that you you could attend cultural events i had mac asked michael about where women can meet men you can try to go to cultural events um NAACP, they have their conferences every year. Um, National Urban League have conferences every year. Um, Coco Denise, you guys are in real estate. Maybe you should go to a real estate conference and um, and see if you could possibly meet someone. And of course, you're not going just to meet someone. You're living and enjoying your life. And in living and enjoying your life, you might meet someone. Remember, Rebecca was at the well. She just went to get some water, okay, at the well. Rachel was at the well uh, watering her sheep. She was a shepherdess. Um, Ruth was in the field. Leah was at home. She never got no husband, okay? Laban had to set it up so that Leah could marry Rachel's husband, Jacob, under disguise. 
So right there, it says that we need to come out of our comfort zone and do something different. Sometimes it's just doing something different. Dress nicely. Guys like bright colors. You know, my closet is full of bright colors. This is all I wear, bright colors, because they're, they're colorblind. They can't see. <laughs> they see something bright. You know, it draws them in. <laughs> and of course, summer is coming. I know it's cold right now. Uh, that's why we're all my my turtlenecks. I have lots of sweaters. I love sweaters. Um, but summer is coming, ladies, so let's get ready, um, you know, and be ready for summer. And I, I want all of you guys to meet your Boaz. I want all of you guys to meet someone, to fall in love, a man that's a provider that will take care of you. Um, I was thinking this morning, I have my bills set up on automatic pay. So, except the mortgage. So, my husband goes to pay the mortgage every month. He goes into the bank to pay the mortgage. I mean, who does that these days? So, I said to him, you know, Mike, I could set it up on order pay for you so you don't have to go in the bank. He was like, nope, I love to go and pay the mortgage. He said it gives him pleasure. Um, it makes him feel good. He is proud. He said that's what his father did. His father would go in the bank every month. To pay the mortgage and I just I thought about that because it gives him pleasure to provide and take care of us and that's what you need ladies a guy that is happy to provide and take care of you not some man who is um, bitter <laughs> about taking care of us and doing for us and our children all right, so I know this was short, but I have to run. So that's it. I'm just encouraging you guys, try to find events in your area or somewhere else, you know. Um, is there a new restaurant in your area or another area that you could go and have lunch? And um, smile. Oh, my God. Smile, ladies. Smile. Smile. Doesn't matter who speak to you, you smile and say thank you. They say good morning, you smile, say good morning. Guys like that little voice, good morning. Or they say good morning, say good morning. They say you're, oh, you look so beautiful. Don't say, ah, ah, oh, you're a bum. Don't talk to me. You don't know who that man is. Say, oh, thank you, thank you. Speak to everybody. I talk to everybody, the homeless man, the male man, the garbage man, I speak to every, every man that gives me a compliment, I smile and I say thank you because I, I know that I'm making their day too. So remember to smile, ladies. We do need, Coca said, we do need that and not a man that wants me to take care of him. Oh my God, it's, it's terrible out here. These men wanting us to take care of him. It's awful. It is awful. And my next book is going to talk about that. All right, guys. I love you guys. I have to run. Denise, say hi. Have an awesome day. Love you. Love you, Denise. Love you guys. Thank you guys for jumping on. I'm going to try to do more lives, and I'll try to make it in the evenings. Um, Mike's been getting home late, so it's kind of hard for me. By the time he gets home at 8 o'clock, you know, I'm sleepy. <laughs> I go to bed early, but I'm up early every morning. All right. I have to run, but I love you guys. Appreciate you. Bye.